all these images are called as long exposure photographs i know diwali is coming and all of you watching this video will be trying out to capture those light painting kind of photos right that you saw a few seconds back and yes many of you have an assumption like only these light trails or light painting images or long exposure photographs no it's not like that that is brand new information <laughs> There are some other parts of long exposure photography as well that you may have not explored and in this video we are gonna just divide long exposure photograph and I'm just gonna explain what are all the long exposure photographs that you can just try out. So yes guys if you are new to the channel I am Cario from India we talk photography filmmaking editing and many other social media stuffs that helps creators like us. So now without wasting any time let's get into the video. Welcome back. So I just want to explain you what is long exposure photography first and let's see what are the divisions that I have made myself. So first what is long exposure photography? Long exposure photography is a process by which we are just exposing our camera sensor for quite a long time than usual. So usually whenever you take a photo you may capture an image at 1 by 1 20th of a second or 1 by 2 40th of a second probably your shutter will be high right so that your shutter opens and closes very fast but in long exposure photography we are going to open our shutter for quite a long time as the name says itself so yes guys maybe we can just keep your shutter speed at 1 second 2 second 8 second 30 second or even use your bulb mode to capture long exposure photographs that is like how many seconds you want you can just keep your shutter open so that's the process of long exposure photography. So now I am just dividing this long exposure photography technique into two different parts. One is with some motion. There will be some motion inside that photograph. Like the subject may be moving or the lights may be moving or whatever something. There is some motion in that photograph and that is one part and the other one is there is no motion at all you may be just thinking what this guy has said long exposure is for capturing motion where do we capture a long exposure without motion right yes that is one thing that probably no one would have said that so watch this video till the end to know what is that technique to capture something which is not in motion but you are using a long exposure so now as i said i am just breaking this long exposure photography like with motion and without motion and also i am just making this with motion segment into two different segments one is at good light conditions and the other one is at low light conditions so these are our long exposure photography segments or parts that i am going to explain in this video the most important part of capturing long exposure photograph is reducing the shakes so let's see some of the steps to reduce shakes so first one is use a tripod so tripod is something that helps us to reduce any kind of shake while capturing a long exposure photograph okay fine if you don't have a tripod how to just equate the effect of a tripod so if you see you can just find a stable base like the one I'm just using here so here I have just used a bucket as a base for my camera Similarly, you can use some kind of a base with a box or anything to have that tripod kind of effect to reduce the shakes. And friends, while capturing these kind of long exposure photograph, it's better to turn off the lens stabilization. If your lens has a stabilization option like this, you have to just turn it off so that uh, the camera itself does not rise to stabilize the image. This is a long exposure. Your shutter is going to stay open for quite a long time. And if the camera tries to stabilize that image, it will probably bring out a shake in your images. So it's better to turn off the stabilization. And also I suggest you to keep the focus on manual. Don't rest out of focus for long exposure photographs. So friends, the next important thing that helps to reduce the shakes in your image is use your camera timer option. So if your camera, almost every camera has that. So just use the camera timer option while capturing long exposure images. And also one more tip I'll give is 
if you have a touch screen on your camera do use the touch screen to capture the image instead of your shutter button so even the small shutter button click may cause some minute shakes on your images so it's better to go with the timer and also with touch screen shutter so friends the next main thing that will help you to reduce the shakes in your camera is just enable mirror lock so whenever you take an image there is a shake on the mirror which can be avoided with the help of mirror lock option in your dslrs so just go to the settings figure out where the mirror lock option is and just enable that mirror lock option So friends moving on to the camera settings keep your setting i mean mode of the camera in manual mode so only in manual mode you can just control all the basic exposure settings like iso aperture shutter speed and even white balance so i would suggest you to just keep your mode in manual mode while just shooting a long exposure photograph the second tip that i would suggest is shoot your images in raw format so by doing this you just need not worry about the white balance as you can just do the same in post processing the third tip is keep the iso low as possible so here you may wonder why i am saying this because generally when you have low light you are just going to increase the iso to achieve the light and that is not going to work in long exposure because in long exposure you are going to reduce the shutter which will help you to just increase the amount of light that is let inside the camera so to equate that you need to keep the iso low as possible which helps you to just uh, escape from the grains or noise that are just formed in your images so keep your iso low as possible the fourth thing is shutter speed so shutter speed as the name says long exposure you are going to experiment with your shutter speed so based on the amount of time you want that uh, frame to be captured you need to just keep your shutter speed if you take a light painting your shutter speed settings may vary with 10 seconds or even 30 seconds with a motion of light that you are going to make while if you are going to capture a moving uh, water or a waterfall something like that 30 or 10 seconds time won't work that good If you want that slight silky effect of a waterfall maybe even a half second or even 2 seconds may work very good so this kind of a difference occurs in shutter speed from based on what you are actually capturing so this comes with practice so let's see some examples for all the segments that i had said earlier after this uh, camera settings discussion so moving on to the next setting which is the aperture so aperture is just selected based on the exposure So if you want everything to be on the frame in focus then you can go with a larger aperture I mean a smaller aperture actually f like f12 or f16 so when you're capturing a waterfall you want all the small parts of the frame in focus right so in such cases you may go with f14 or f16 even and you may also have the sunlight so when you keep the shutter low your image may be overexposed So in order to equate that you have to increase the aperture or you can also go with an ND filter. So aperture varies with the exposure that you are having on the frame. So it can be even f2.8 or it can be even f16. So these are the basic settings that we have to have in mind while taking a long exposure photograph. So now we have seen how to reduce shakes while capturing a long exposure photograph and also the basic settings that are required while capturing a long exposure photograph. Let's now see those segments that I had said earlier. These are the segments I have divided the long exposure photography in two. So first let's see long exposure photography without motion at low light conditions. So this is a setup I have made to explain this process. We have a miniature toy and at the both sides I have two mobile phones just uh, splashing some color lights one with purple and one with yellow. Here our camera is set up and we are going to capture image both in auto mode and manual mode. I'll just show you the difference that actually happens. So first I am just making sure the focus is correct. So here I am not using scene detection auto because the flash automatically pops up in uh, low light condition. That's why I am taking the image in flash off mode. 
so these are the images we have got now i am going to take the same image in manual mode with shutter 3.2 seconds aperture 5 and iso 100 i am just using the touch screen to capture the image so these are the images we have got let's now compare both these images just tell me which one is better guys hope you would have selected this right yes that image is captured in long exposure technique so iso was 100 so if you zoom and see the auto mode image has more grains comparatively so there is no grains in the long exposure image so i have used the same technique to capture these images so friends this is the technique i said you earlier where there was no motion but we used the long exposure so this is very helpful when you are capturing some monuments that are quite lit just imagine if you are just in front of the eiffel tower at night and you are just capturing the image of the eiffel tower and you see a lot of grains in it you'll be very upset right you can just use this technique by reducing the shutter to whatever it is 5 seconds or 10 seconds just try out guys so you can just reduce the shutter and have a fixed and strong base without any shake use the timer capture the image at low iso at 100 lowest iso you are going to get a clear image without any noise and yes this technique is useful for that so you can also try out by keeping these kind of two lights and capturing images of miniature toys or anything at low shutter speed which is long exposure so yes guys this is about long exposure without any motion at low light now let's move to the long exposures with some motion on the frame now let's see long exposure photography with motion at good light conditions so this is the first image just have a look of it and this is the second image so comparing these two what do you see the left image is quite sharp while the right image the water is quite silky right this kind of effect is achieved by taking a long exposure photograph so according to my guess it should be 0.5 to 2 seconds of long exposure photography and they may have used i'm not sure they may have used an indie filter in order to reduce the light so this is another image where i have followed the same technique to capture uh, long exposure photography at good light conditions now let's see the long exposure photography technique with motion at low light conditions so we have light painting here or light rails where the light rails of vehicles is captured or even star trails where the movement of stars is captured so for now i am just going to explain how a light painting can be done for this i have a setup here where i have just tied a portable serial light into a bended uh, iron rod and we have a miniature toy here and our camera is ready to take the image so what i'm going to do is i have just kept that miniature toy at quite a distance we have focused that toy i'm just going to take an image with slow shutter so here my shutter is 3.2 and aperture is f5 and iso s100 so now i'm just using the touch screen to capture the image and i'm gradually moving this light Yes, now we have got this kind of beautiful outputs here. Now this is another setup where I have used another miniature toy and in the mobile screen I have taken the colors of a rainbow. So in manual mode I have taken shutter speed at 10 seconds, aperture at f13 and ISO 100. Let's focus the miniature toys first. So I'm just have set the timer on and let's switch off the light. So I'm just gonna just slide my uh, mobile screen behind the miniature toys. And also parallelly I have to show some light on the toys to make them visible. So yes, we have got this beautiful outputs after this process. That's lovely, right? I love these images, guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments.
So yes guys, I hope this video was really helpful for you in understanding all the long exposure photography techniques. If yes, do hit that like button and let me know in comments like what all videos you want from me. And I just made this video because my previous long exposure photography on light painting with mobile has crossed 15,000 views. Yay! And I just want to make it clear that long exposure is not only light painting. There are many other things that are left unexplored by many of us. So I hope this video made it clear to you of all the different types of long exposure photography. And if you're new here and still watching this video, thanks. Thanks for your support. But please do a little bit support by clicking on the subscribe button and also just click that bell icon to get regularly notified whenever I make a video. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you had a good time watching this video. We'll meet in another video. Until then, it's a carry signing off.